Hey guys, I'm Jerry Mitchellack, and as you well know, on the range, flags on the long guns is what I'm all about. And another aspect of range safety we're going to talk about, we have Mr. Steven here. And this is something I look for every time I'm on the range, so Steven's going to give us a heads up on that. What you got here, young man? Hi, my name is Steven Kennedy. I have a company called Steve's Snakesuary. We rescue snakes and we do educational presentations with them. I'm a uh, firefighter and advanced EMT. Okay. And uh, I do have my permits through wildlife and fisheries through the state of Louisiana and through animal control to, to rescue snakes and to also keep them. So we're going to talk about snakes. You know, just the other day, the warm spell came. There was three water moccasins out on the, on the back rifle range within just a few minutes of one another. There was three large water moccasins. So I think you brought one. Yes, sir, I did. I brought several moccasins and I brought a lot of local snakes that we have here in Louisiana because a lot of times people get a lot of these snakes confused yeah. with water moccasins and right. other snakes. So yeah. I brought several snakes that we could put side by side so yeah. you know, we can show some of the differences. Pull us out a water moccasin. That's you want to see a water that's, moccasin? That's one of my sure. favorites. All right. Uh, when I'm out around on the range, guys, if I'm going to move a piece of equipment, pick up a board, do anything that's something on the ground or step over it, I'm always watching for these guys because they will surprise you. Especially in the springtime, middle of the summer, they come out later. In the day, but uh, he'll he'll take out a good water moccasin here and give you an idea of why sure. we keep our eyes open on the range. Now I brought a I brought a couple of different moccasins to show too. You know, if, if we want to hold these up side by side, here's a pretty good sized moccasin. I do want to state though that the, the the gloves that I have, they don't say that they're bite proof. They say they're bite resistant, <laughs> but that's what these these are made for. These are actually specially made gloves. Yeah. This is a water moccasin right here. That's a nice one. It's a pretty good size. Wrapped up around a copperhead right there. Now the, the water moccasins do have the quote unquote diamond or triangle shaped head. That's yep. because they have their venom glands in their jaws. And you can smell them too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do give off a musk. And uh, a lot of times I actually smell them before I see them. Yep, exactly, exactly. So, I know if, I, if I'm around a pond, I know you know if there's one around, I can smell it. Yep. Yep, but, uh, and they do have, uh, there's things I want to talk about. They do have the cat slit pupils. Uh, but of course, I don't tell anybody to get close enough to look at the pupils. Yeah, you know, I don't yeah. want anybody to get close enough to get bit or anything. Yep, but. he's a pretty one. Yep. But they, yep, yeah, there he is. Talk to me, Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do hold their mouths open. And that's why they call them. That's why they call water moccasins cotton mouths, because when they hold their mouths open, there's one as cotton. Yep. yep. He's he's sensed all his brethren that I've I've sent to the to the yonder land. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me get a couple more out if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. that's a pretty good size one. That's a nice one. Um, I brought some smaller ones. This is a smaller water moccasin here, and you can actually see the patterns. Yeah. And uh, I, I like to call these like little lightning bolts going down the side. They look like mm -hmm. little lightning bolts, little pixelated patterns. Yeah. Yeah. And he's actually still got the little greenish, yellowish tip on his tail too. They use that to lure their prey. Mm. And uh, But as they get older, they get darker and they lose those patterns. Yes, indeed. And uh, I brought, you know, mm. brought some little copperheads also. A lot of people get these confused. Now the copperheads, most of the time, the copperheads have the classic Hershey kiss shapes on the side. It looks like a little Hershey kiss on the side, or if you look at it from the top, it looks yep. like an hourglass. Yep. And uh, these guys will always stay this, they'll have that lighter color and they, mm -hmm. they, they'll keep those patterns. One thing I, I find about the copperheads, they blend in so well with the leaves on the ground and the, mm -hmm. and the pine needles. When I'm walking, I'm always looking for one of these guys. Yeah. They're the hardest to see. Yep. And they're very, very plentiful here. I've seen them everywhere. So that's one of the things I really watch for are the copperheads. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, both of these guys, then, you know, these guys have the cat slit pupils also, again, you know. But, you know, one thing, their eyes dilate just like people's. So, you know, their eyes don't always have that cat slit pupil. You know, if it gets dark, they'll dilate and they get, okay. you know, they get yep. more round. So they don't always stay that cat yep. slit pupil. But these guys, both the water moccasins and the copper ha copperheads have a, ner a hemotoxic venom. And uh, so it messes with your blood system. Well, you got a big one in there, too. Yeah, we got a pretty good size one down in here. Yeah, he's a little lighter, these are, one. These... <laughs> a little lighter than the other one. But yeah, he's they, that's, they get uh, a pretty good size. That's why we always keep... These don't seem to be as aggressive as the water moccasins. Mm -hmm. They uh, they tend to go the other way. The water moccasin wants to stand his ground. These guys yeah. usually scoot around yeah. and leave. Uh, but they are as venomous, I would think. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, they have about the same... They're about, as, about the same potency. And, um, you know, one thing, too, I, I hear all the time people say a water moccasin will chase you. I've caught hundreds of water moccasins. I've never had one chase me. I hadn't either. These, yeah. uh, they usually stand their ground. Yeah, they'll stand their ground, and, you know, a, a snake's only defense is to either bite or get away. Right. And sometimes they just happen to get away in your area. Which true. So, but, you know, they don't chase you. They'll stand their ground, though. That's like a blue runner. 
Yeah, Blue Racer, yeah. yeah we yeah, call they, them Blue Runners or yeah. Coach, Coach Whips. Yep, or, yep. Coach Whips, Blue Racers are all in the same family. Yeah, yep. You see a lot of those on the berm. Uh, I, yep. I'll let those guys let do their job. Right. Is that what you have here? Uh, we got a, I've got a couple of different snakes in here. These are non-venomous here. And uh, I brought two rat snakes and two different types of water snakes because a lot of people get these confused with venomous snakes. And uh, I got a, this is a rat snake. Some people call them chicken snakes because they, they find them in their chicken coop all the time. Yeah, egg eater. Yep, and these guys will get quite large. And both of these, these rat snakes and I've got a diamondback water snake. Yep. And a yellow belly water snake. And all of these here, They'll flatten mm -hmm. their heads out into that diamond or triangle shape. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why a lot of people get these confused with the water moccasins because they'll flatten their heads out. So I tell people you can't always go by the head shape. And uh, these guys too, they don't have rattles, but they will rattle their tails against leaves and dead grass to sound like rattles. I've seen these guys on the side of a tree. Mm -hmm. They yep. love to rob nests. You see them just like stuck to the side of a tree. Yep. And they can climb just about anywhere. Yep. Yeah, the rat snakes, a lot of times when people tell me they have a snake in their attic or up over their door, yeah. I know exactly what it is. These guys will climb walls and trees to eat birds. There's a lot of those back on the pistol yeah. bays. It's pretty interesting. You know why a snake's tongue is forked? I do not. Pick up more. Right. They smell and they taste with their tongue, but their tongue is forked because if they're chasing their prey, they know whether to go left or right. Okay. Yeah, they started with more surface that. area. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's it actually to tell, tell what direction to go in. Yep. So what you got here? I got two cane break or cane break rattlesnakes or timber rattlesnakes. Yeah. Um, I brought a little darker one and I brought a little lighter one. And one thing I do want to show with this one, let me get my gloves back on here. Yeah, these guys are on the property everywhere. They'll, they'll cross on that little road right in front of the house, right in the corner of the road. I don't know why it is that one section of wood to the other, mm -hmm. but that's their path right there. And uh, these are the guys that I really watch out on. They'll be on a, they'll be on a pistol range occasionally, but uh, anytime I move equipment, this is what I'm looking for because these guys can do some... Oh yeah, they yeah. can do some serious damage, yeah. exactly. They'll get your attention. I'm uh, I'm gonna be real careful with these, you know, like I said, these aren't bite proof gloves, they're bite resistant, yeah. but... I'm gonna give you some uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, pause real quick, yeah, do I need to give Jerry uh, an out, or are you getting Jerry right there? I'm good. Okay. okay. Uh, one thing I'm I want to show... <laughs> one thing I want to show with these guys is this smaller one has actually, he's got more rattles than the bigger one. And that's one thing, you know, a yeah. lot of people say that the, uh, let me try to find the By tail the of this one. Yeah. You, some people think you can tell how old it is by the rattles, but their rattles will actually break off. Okay. And yep. uh, so you can't always go by that. I've actually got a cane break that's larger than this one at home, and it only has two rattles because his rattles mm. broke off. Mm. Uh, but I brought, uh, you know, a darker one. They can be darker. They can be lighter. And uh, they blend in very well. They're just like the copperheads. They can blend in very well. we got the, a technical question. Is it legal to, de to de actually destroy them on your private property? Not in Louisiana. In Texas, it is. It's not Louisiana. Yeah. Okay. In Texas, it's actually illegal. So, uh, but in Louisiana, yeah, our laws are a little, little lax there. So, so you can, or you can't. You can, but I, I, I don't I recommend can. it. I don't recommend it. The one reason I don't recommend killing snakes. Uh, all snakes have their purpose. Yeah. Uh, they actually tracked several timber rattlesnakes. In 2013, they put trackers in some of them hmm. in a state, and they found out that the timber rattlesnakes in that area were stopping the spread of Lyme disease. Because okay. ticks will get on the mice, and you yep. know you go out in the woods and you get a tick on you and get Lyme disease. And they, when they put those trackers, they were actually, they actually found that they were stopping the spread of Lyme disease. One thing we had this year, we had a bumper crop of acorns, mm -hmm. and the rat and mite population exploded. Right. So these guys must be doing their job. Uh, Exactly. Continuously monitoring the, the mice. Exactly. And the yeah. Rats, cause yeah. They're, they've gotten everywhere this fall, so pretty, yeah. pretty good. And then uh, a lot of things. Uh, a lot of one thing that a lot of people don't know too is that uh, they're actually using snake venom now to cure cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and help stroke victims. So you know, even the venomous snakes have their purpose. You know, they're here for a reason. They're using them for medicine now, and and like you mentioned, they're they're keeping the rodent population in check too. So they they all have their purpose. So Keep your eyes open. <laughs> yep. And I've got, uh, got, I brought two more snakes. We have several, several local snakes here in Louisiana. And uh, I only brought a couple of them with me. This one that, uh, this one right here is one that a lot of people know about. This is a speckled king snake. Yeah. And a lot of people know about these because they, they like to keep these around because king snakes eat other snakes. And they even eat venomous snakes. Uh, so a lot of people know about this one. A lot of people keep these around. Quite a few on, on, the, on the property. Yeah. And uh, Quite so. Quite a few of them. Uh, another snake, though, if I if he'll stay back in the he wants to go play. Yeah, yeah, he wants to go play. 
is uh, this is another type of king snake that we have here that a lot of people don't know about, and this is actually a prairie king snake. And uh, these guys here, they um, they look a little poisonous, don't mm -hmm. they? Got that yep. color to them. Yep. yep. And sometimes you can actually see the patterns a little bit better on their back. They have little squares all down their back. And uh, but it's, these guys stay underground a lot. And, his uh, backbone's a little different. He's a little mm -hmm. bit more pointy than a, yeah than the the spotted. Yep. But this is a prairie king snake. These guys will eat other snakes also. Is that common to this area? Too? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I can't ever recall seeing one of those mm -hmm. on the property. So, yep. kind of different. Got that ridge on his back. Yep. Kind of very distinctive feature there. Yep. Huh. So these are, uh, like I said, uh, uh, so just some of the uh, most common snakes that people will see around, t uh, around here in Louisiana. And uh, sometimes in Texas, we have, you know, these are all over in Texas also. And... A lot of these people get mixed up with each other. You know, mm -hmm. they think the, like I said, the rat snakes or water snakes or water moccasins or rattlesnakes and things like that. Okay. Okay, Steve, when you find these on a range, what do I do? What's the best thing well, to the, do? The best thing to do is just leave a snake alone. A snake's not out to get you. It's not going to, yeah. it's not, not out to kill you or anything right. like that. Yeah. Snakes aren't going to chase you. Best thing to do is leave it alone. And another thing to do, just in case you find one and it's not leaving your property, you can call a snake expert like me if you're in northwest Louisiana. I'm, I'm available. If not, you can contact your local animal control and they can handle that for you. If in the event that somebody does get bit, you've got plenty of time to get to the hospital. Uh, we've got several hospitals, you know, locally that, that carry antivenom. The best thing to do is just stay calm. I know that's easier said than done. The best thing to do is stay calm because it lowers your heart rate and your breathing rate and lay flat, remove any jewelry, hmm. and just get to the hospital. That's the best thing to do. Well. Well, that's sound advice, but uh, if, you, if you're interested in Steve and his Facebook and, and his YouTube channel, there will be a link in the description box below. So, part of range safety, guys. Got to live with nature. Get some.